Welcome back to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're doing some album mastering and getting it ready for digital distribution. For the distribution side of this tutorial, we'll be using DistroKid, which is a fantastic service for musicians that make it affordable and easy to get your music online on all the major online distributors. DistroKid is sponsoring this video, and if you go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash ReaperBlog, you'll save some money and support the channel in the process. All right, so let's head over to Reaper and get this album or EP project organized here. So in this project, I have four songs that will potentially be on a short EP. I've just dropped them into the timeline, no particular order, um, but that is actually the first thing we need to do is figure out the order for these songs. So um, the song Prism, that's gonna be my track four. So um, I think this one here, or maybe this one, it'll be my first song. Chemicals, and then this one, which I don't even have a name for, and then these other ones. So there are multiple ways of approaching, organizing a mastering session. Um, typically you see it laid out something like this, or sometimes you'll see it on two tracks alternating like this. Processing can go on the individual items or on the track and you can choose whether to share certain types of processing like limiting on the master track or have it uh, per item or per track. What I typically do is have one limiter on the master track that everything goes through and then each track on its own will have its own EQ and any sort of other processing that is specific to that track. I don't often have to change limiter settings between songs, but if I do, typically it's just through automating the threshold control or just actually automating the level going into the limiter. So if this is the order, I'm just going to uh, snap each of these items end to end like this. So I'm just putting, I'm clicking on the edge that moves my cursor there. And while I have snap on and I drag this, it's going to snap that point to the edit cursor. Shift double click to create a time selection on my items. Then I'm going to use a region by just right clicking, create region from selection. And I'm gonna shift double click on that region. That brings up the naming window. I'm actually gonna rename this song. It was called Chemical Snuffers. I'm just gonna call it Chemical. I'm gonna call this one Waves. So again, making a region and renaming it. Okay, I'm just gonna call this one Thorn, which is the main synth that I use for that one. And then this one is called uh, Prism. Okay, so those are my four tracks and I can rearrange the order of these now really easily because I have regions and I can just drag and drop and you just watch where the arrow goes and that will swap the order of two different songs. Pretty simple. The order of the tracks doesn't really matter. Uh, we're not actually going to be exporting tracks, we'll be exporting the master mix. So track order makes no difference at all. Just sometimes it looks better to organize them like this and see them in descending order like this. Now we need to balance out the sound of the different songs here. And so we've got four different songs. We need to level out the volume and also kind of give them a, a similar EQ curve so it's not, you know, doesn't sound like four different artists. So one of the best places to put monitoring type effects into your project is in the monitoring effects chain. So we go to view, monitoring effects. And in here, we've got an effects chain that affects every project. And typically you're only going to put in things like metering plugins in here. So. So in mine, I have some pink noise and white noise generators that helps me uh, calibrate my speakers. I also have metering plugins and some video effects in there. So I'm gonna bring in a plugin called VUMT Deluxe. 
and I'll pop that out. So I'm going to use this. I'm not, not actually going to use any of the special features for this one. I'm just going to use this as a VU, VU meter. So I'm going to calibrate this at uh, minus 10. I'm going to watch this meter and I'm, I'm going to try to get to about zero dB VU as I increase the volume. And I'm going for the loudest section. So uh, VU meters are just kind of like a kind of like an old school way of, of working with, uh, with volume metering. And it's, it's not super accurate and detailed uh, like a peak meter, but a, it's sort of an average and kind of gives you an, a rough idea of how things are balanced. All right, so in that section of the song, it's hitting zero VU roughly. And uh, that's, you know, that's my baseline. I added 7.6 dB of gain to that. Yeah, let's take this section. I'm just taking the item volume and turning it up. And so as long as it's not consistently well below or consistently above that zero VU point, these tracks are going to be roughly balanced. And, and I, if I jump back and forth. It's not too far off. There is some EQ differences and stylistically they're a little different. So there's going to be some natural differences, but they're a lot closer. And I'll just repeat this process for the last two tracks. Volume balances, roughly done. Honestly, it is very quick when you're not talking. It's you know, three seconds per song. Let's bring in the master limiter now. So as much as I would love to use the meme of Sausage Fattener on the master track, um, and actually in previous versions of these songs, I actually did use that. Uh, we're actually gonna use the uh, T-Rex Stealth Limiter, which is just a nice, clean, uh, inner sample peak aware limiter. I've got my startup preset loading by default, which is a 2 dB boost and a minus one ceiling. I don't want to go above minus one because these are eventually going to be uh, converted into AAC or MP3 files, and you need some headroom for that conversion. All right, let's actually bring up a VU meter. So uh, I've got the U-Lean meter on my uh, monitoring effects chain. You can also use the Reaper's built-in one. Um, I do like this, this graph on this one. So let me reset everything here. And again, you wanna kind of find the loudest sections, play for a few seconds and get a short-term range. So about minus 12 short term. Let's clear that and go to the next one. So that one's a little quieter and you kind of just have to use your best judgment. Does it need to be exactly the same as the song before or the song after? Or can this be a more chill song? And if it is a more chill song, you know, should it actually be quieter, lower peak level or lower uh, integrated loudness? And so I think I'm okay with that right there. Mm -hmm. 
And so this is a more aggressive sound. It's hitting minus 10.9 short term. It's only like that's one dB LUFS different from the first track. And yeah, so I think that's okay. And this is kind of why I use the VU meter first, because it gets you in the rough area. It's not so precise. So when you go and look at a loudest meter, you know, you're still using your ears and you're not looking for a specific number. Um, every song is going to have a kind of ideal spot, a kind of loudness sweet spot. And I find the VU meter is easier to find that than with the loudest meter where you're looking at the numbers and and it's easy to just like normalize to whatever value and call it a day. So don't do that. Okay, and I'm just gonna boost this one, maybe one more dB. That's our loudness meters, that's our loudness processing. And now let's work on individual tracks. So this first track, So right there, I'm just thinking, is it bright enough? Is it bassy enough? Um, is it a pleasing tone overall? Does it sound balanced between the lows and the highs? Is there anything sticking out? Um, and you can spend as much time on this as you want. Um, we're just gonna do like a really quick EQ on each of these um, just to get through this video a little quicker. A project this size typically can be done in, in an hour, but if you're doing things like checking on multiple monitors, different headphones, rendering files and listening in your car, things like that, all this takes additional time. So I like to work quickly, get through the bulk of the processing, take a break, and then um, finalize it, send it off to the client. In this case, I am the client, so it's a little more difficult. Uh, let's actually do some automation because in this track here, um, I've got some low buildup that I want to get rid of in the last section. I think I purposely added in another synth, but the mix is a little bit off there. So I'm going to take the low shelf gain, move that a little bit, go to parameter, show track envelope. And now I've got that track envelope there. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit in the section and we can kind of gradually transition there. And so that looks like this. The main part of the song, it's at 0.9 and in this section of the song, it's at minus 3.8. So, you don't really hear that change. It just sounds more balanced as it goes through uh, that transition. That's something that you can do on anything that you want to change at any time in the mastering process. Uh, never forget that you have 
automation for every single parameter if you need it. Next, I'm gonna do some quick dynamic processing on each track. And we're gonna set this up as four bands, ozone nine, dynamic. So I'm gonna take this section of the song and I'm gonna press this learn button. And this will automatically choose my, my um, frequency bands that fit this song. And after a few seconds, it's analyzed and set the frequency bands appropriately for what's coming in. And then we can link controls using, um, using this link control. And we can adjust the threshold and the limiter, or the compressor and limiter thresholds for each band. Often I do that and, and then just adjust individually. So you have to be careful with this. You can lose punch if you have the wrong settings uh, for any of the bands. And I think I have done that a little bit here with uh, the kick drum, if you listen to the section. So same process for the next song. I'm just gonna reset, put in four bands. So up next, I want to control kind of the uh, stereo balance. And mainly I want to focus the low end. Uh, on a couple of these tracks, there are uh, some, some sort of panning effects that are affecting the low end, um, which doesn't always translate well. And I, I feel like you just get a, a much more focused sound. So I'm using Ozone 9 Imager. Um, I just put in an extra band on the low end at about 130 hertz. And if I solo this, you can actually see this on the meter, what's, uh, what's happening here. So you can see it jumping back and forth between left and right. We can just narrow this down. And that's sounding better to me. Is it necessary to do that with every track? Uh, not really. Um, so I should actually switch this over to processing just on uh, the tracks that need it. And I'm actually not gonna do any widening of the other frequencies. I think it's fine the way it is. There's a lot more processing that could be done, but in the interest of just moving this tutorial along, we're gonna call it there and move on to rendering. So we're actually gonna export these with the standard CD specifications, a 16-bit wave, 44.1 kilohertz. One more thing I should check is the master limiter. Do we have dither on? No, we didn't. So we're just gonna set this to a uh, 16-bit dither. You want that last in the chain. Uh, so then we don't need to do dither in the render window here. 
So 24-bit wave, we'll switch that to 16-bit wave. We're going to render the master mix with the bounds set to project regions. And so that automatically comes up with four files here. So um, we don't have our names set right. So this will be whatever the artist name is. So Reaper blog, you can put in a dash if you want. And then let's use the region names. And actually, because we want the track number to be there as well, so let's do dollar sign region number dash. And so here are the file names now. 01 Reaper blog chemical, 02 Reaper blog waves, 03 Reaper blog thorn, 04 Reaper blog prism. Yeah, that's ready to render now. I'm actually not going to use any of the normalize or anything like that. We don't need it. We've already taken care of the volume balancing and things like that. Although maybe you do want to actually export a, a reference version normalized to minus 14 because that's what a lot of the streaming services play back as. Your masters shouldn't be at that at minus 14, but if you want to hear how your masters sound compared to everything else, exporting a version at minus 14 LUFS integrated can be a helpful test. All right, so I'm just gonna render these four files. I think I have the right project folder and yeah, ready to go. And in the render statistics, we can see things like it's peaked at minus 0 0.9, so it didn't ex exceed, um, it didn't go above zero. Uh, so my limiter is doing the right thing. LUFS integrated, pretty similar across these two tracks, minus 13.3, and these numbers are going to update as the tracks render. Very, very similar uh, LUFS integrated levels. The first three were within a tenth of a dB, and then the last one, which means that that one may be perceived as a little bit quieter. So I wonder, I'm not quite sure what happened there. Funnily enough, that was the one that I pushed a little bit harder. At that point, you would just listen to everything, make sure it sounds good, make changes if needed. Otherwise, get ready for distribution. So now that we have our files, we're going to upload them to DistroKid. You're going to go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash ReaperBlog. You'll get a 7% discount off your first year, uh, but it's only $20 to upload unlimited music for the year. And um, as just a $20 recurring fee yearly um, to keep your stuff in the stores. That gets you into Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, TikTok, Pandora, all the major streaming services. Um, for one low price. That's not per album, it's not per single, it's just $20 a year. That's amazing. Uh, and they make it really easy and really affordable. Uh, so I'm gonna sign in to my account here and we'll get our music uploaded. So I'm gonna click on Upload Some Music. You can choose which services you're going to put your music into. By default, they're mostly all clicked, so we'll just leave that. And we're going to upload four songs has this been previously released? No. Artist or band name? I guess I'll just do Reaper blog. If it's already in Spotify, you can uh, link your Spotify artist ID. Otherwise, you click no. Already Is it already in Apple Music? We'll say no. And now it's just checking if um, uh, if that's available. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that's available because I already have that YouTube URL. So um, release date. Let's just say October 12th, sure. You want to schedule your release at, at least a week in advance so that uh, things can go live kind of at the same time. Some services take a little longer to process. So if you're planning a launch, give yourself at least a week. What time is it going to release? Doesn't matter to me. Um, what time zone will it be available for pre-order, record label, We'll call it the record label Reaper Tunes. Do we have artwork? I don't know if I have artwork. Let me check. Okay, so I'm gonna drag in an image. All right, and then you have the opportunity to give the album a title, and set the album price, if it's $10, $1.99, whatever you like. Language, genre. You can set the song titles. Uh, so the first one was Chemical. And we can add a featured artist if we want. Are there other versions of this? No. And then we can add the file. 
So got the first file. Is it Adobe Atmos? Are you the songwriter? Uh, what names do you want to see here? Are there lyrics? Is it a radio edit? Is it instrumental? Set the price for individual track. And you just repeat the process for all of the songs. In the extras, there's interesting and useful things like YouTube content ID. So if someone is using your song, you have the option of collecting some of their ad income from that video, and you choose per video what, uh, what you want to do. The leave a legacy option, $49 one-time fee, and that keeps this album in the stores forever. So instead of spending the $20 every year to keep your stuff in the stores, you can add on a $49 uh, per album fee and then keep it in there forever. And then once you hit done, they take care of the rest. They get everything organized and ready for launch. And so you can just focus on getting your marketing stuff organized or focus on making more music, whatever you need to do. Uh, they make it really simple. So they are a great service for an independent musician to use. Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Thank you to you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.